I'm struck when I read Jesus. This is why I encourage you to read Jesus, because as you read Jesus, he'll blow all your preconceived notions about yes, theology out of the water. Yes, he will. Jesus walks, is the walking and talking embodiment of God, and in it he loves, and in it he shares the heart of his Father, and in it he says, forgive. What I love about the parable of the wheat and the tares is not that I'm wheat and all the weeds are going to burn someday. I used to love that. Used to love that part of this parable. Oh, yeah. I go, you know what I love about that wheat and tares? Man, we win in the end. This world's going to burn in hell. God's going to do... Jesus throws that part in at the very end in private to his disciples. Now, I know it's not private because it's in your Bible, right? We all get it. And he knew we would all get it. But when he's talking to the public in his day, he doesn't bother to tell them how the world ends. Because the heart of God is not... I don't believe, based on the stories of Jesus, the heart of God is not the explanation to the world of how it all goes down. It's the explanation of how Jesus goes down into the earth and raises up in the newness of life so that you can experience heaven on the earth. Heaven comes down to us. The great hermeneutical key, possibly, of the Bible is, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Because Father, forgive them, they know not what they do is not what you say when your enemies kill you. It's the opposite of what you say when your enemies kill you. Yeah. Get them back. You say, get them back. Yeah. Avenge me, Dad. Yeah. Do you want to know why the Bible tells you that the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel? The book of Hebrews says the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Why? Because the blood of Abel is screaming, avenge me. Yeah. Cain kills Abel and Cain says to God, everywhere I go, people are going to want to kill me. How does Cain know that? Instantaneously in the human response is vengeance. The second Cain kills Abel, he goes, "Uh uh-oh. Everywhere I go, people are going to want to kill me because that's our nature. He figured that out in a heartbeat. And God marks him with mercy so that those can't kill him. And there's this downward spiral in the system of man in which reciprocity makes us feel better. The only way we're going to feel better about it is if somebody pays, somebody bleeds, somebody dies. The blood of Jesus hits the same earth as the blood of Abel. When it drips off of Calvary, it hits the dirt. It's a second Adam's blood to pay for the loss of the first Adam. Where Cain spills Abel's blood and Abel's blood screams vengeance, vengeance, vengeance. Jesus' blood hits the earth and screams, avenged! avenged and let that blood do the work let that blood go to work to do the work the heart of our father was never I, and i'm going to say this in closing this is the kind of thing you got to you got to close on because this will be one you need to chew on all right um we read the old testament And I think we dealt with this a little bit when we were here in December, but it's a good place to stop. We read the Old Testament where God allows Israel an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's vengeance. You break my arm, I break your arm. In the name of God. Right? That's in the Bible. What you don't realize is that that was actually pulling the fences in on the reciprocity of humanity because humanity is not you break my arm I break yours what's humanity you break my arm I break every bone in your body so you never break my arm again right that's humanity that's natural now I know it's funny but it's true think about it that's our that's our whole response system We, we, we run that baby right up the flagpole all the way to the American military You strike us, we'll blow you off the map so that you don't get to strike our children. Right? Right? You hit me, I don't hit you back. I burn your house down so that your kids can't hit me back. And we call that a good movie. Oh, yeah. Right? Okay, that's sort of what we do with the message of the gospel. That's right. You ignore God, he'll burn you in hell forever. Because he doesn't just pay you back by ignoring you, which he could do because he's God. 
He actually just crushes you soullessly for all of time and eternity because God, in the end, actually decides to do things the way the world does it. Right. Yeah. Or does he? <laughs> See, you got to be wrestling that stuff out. you got to be at least taking that baby to the mat and dropping an elbow on it once in a while. It's your job. You are the new Israel, the new contenders with God. you got to at least wrestle these big truths out. You got to at least talk about them. And so God brings in the law and he goes, okay, here's the way the Philistines do it. Hit a Philistine, he'll kill your kids. Right. We don't do things that way. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. They hit you, you get to hit them back. And Israel, we think they were excited. I know we, I, I think we think they went, ooh, you get to live in a world. You hit me, I hit you back. I think they were mad. Oh, yeah. You mean I got to live in a world where I can only do to you what you do to me? And then comes Jesus. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, if a man smites you on the cheek, turn to him your other one also. Now you think you hated the first rule? How are you going to like that next one? Yeah. Now, why did I bring this up? Because what Jesus is doing is showing you what the heart of his father always was. Right. The heart of his father was never eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Because if you live in a world where it's eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, eventually you end up with no teeth and no eyes. So Jesus shows you the heart of the Father and says, turn the other cheek. What is turn the other cheek if not forgive what is unforgivable? That's Jesus. And that's why when they hang him above earth and his blood drops to the dirt and saturates Abel's blood, his blood speaks better things. And the better things is, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. I think there's a dual interpretation. There's probably more than that, but there's two for my, that settle my spirit. One, Father, we're going to have to forgive them because not forgiving them isn't working. Right. That's right. Not forgiving them. They, they're guilty and condemned and bitter, and they just sin over and over and over and over again. Because here's what happens to us. I'm already done anyway. Who cares? I might as well go ahead and... Yeah. Right? Isn't that our attitude? I already screwed up. Might as well just go ahead and screw up some more. Yeah. I mean, I already messed this thing up. I mean, who cares? I already did wrong. Might as well just go ahead and do wrong. Doing wrong is my only hope. The only way I'm going to get out of this, just do more wrong. I already messed it up. Might as well mess it up more. Burn the whole house down. Just build a new one. Just finish this marriage off. Finish this relationship off. Finish this debt off. Finish this thing off. Just go ahead and burn the whole thing down. Start over. That's what happens when we live in perpetual guilt. If we're not forgiven, why not just go ahead and burn the whole thing down? That's right. Right? Yeah. And we wonder why the darkness keeps getting darker. They go, well, if we're going to hell, we might as well go down swinging. So if, if we're already messed up, then we might as well just mess up some more. Like, who really cares? There's no real parameter anyway. And so the first reason Jesus says, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do, is because if they don't get forgiven, we're really in trouble. But the second reason, and this one helps me sleep at night, more than even than that one. Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Dad, for 33 years I've been a human, and it ain't easy we got to forgive them. Being human is hard. It's one thing to be God, to set above it. So God put on an earth suit and became a man so he would know how hard it is. And when he went to the cross, he said, Dad, we got to forgive them. It ain't easy being them. It helps me sleep at night because I know God knows how hard it is to be me. I know we think about that opposite. Ooh, how hard it would be to be God. But God knows how hard it is to be you. Yeah. Because let me tell you, everything you went through, He went through with you. That's right. Every abuse, every neglect, every molestation, yes. every imprisonment, every addiction, every bondage, He went through it with you. Yeah. So that He could say, Father, forgive them. It ain't easy being them.